it's like, do we need this many bananas? I'm like, yeah, we do. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nicole and today I'm going to do a grocery haul for you guys. I have so many of these on my channel. They're always fun just to share with you guys what I picked up at the grocery store. And today's video specifically are like our staples that we basically buy every single week. I actually have a video of food that like the foods I eat every single week. I'll link that here. And I have like a lot of different list videos like that. Um, but basically today is just a restock of the fridge. We were so low on groceries like all the fresh produce, all of our staples like eggs, milk, and butter and stuff like that. So this feels really nice to restock, fill up the fridge and be ready for the week. Now, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. It's free. I post here every single week. You can click that red button down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you like grocery hauls like this. It really helps support my channel. But without further ado, let's get into the haul of the groceries. Sagey is actually napping and I can see her on the monitor. I'm hoping I can get through this video before she wakes up. If not, she'll probably make a cameo. It'll be like old, old times when she was just a little newborn and I was doing all my videos with her on my, on my side. So we have a lot of fresh produce here as you can see that is basically what we were out of we have like our freezer staples our pantry staples even like meat downstairs because we get that usually ordered in frozen which is helpful but we were like out of the main goods the stuff that you add to the pantry stuff and the freezer stuff to actually make a meal so i'm gonna just go over i will start with like my, my favorites my greens, which I use in all my smoothies. I just like to buy um, organic baby spinach. I also have a ton of Swiss chard and kale still in the garden, so I've been using that in smoothies. And I will be using it for soups, which I got some soup staples because it's officially fall and it's getting cooler out and I want like all the warm, hearty stews and soups and those kind of foods. So because of that, I got a restock on some onions here. I feel like I always run out, run out of onions. I, growing up, you're just like used to your parents having like garlic, onions, carrots, and like the basics. And as an adult, you realize like, you're the one that has to get that stuff. So we run out of onions all the time. The other day I was filming and I had to ask my mom to bring some onions because I was all out and she was coming by. I'm like, can I borrow a couple onions from you? Cause I, yeah, I was making, I was recipe testing a dish actually. Anyway, so we got onions. I got lots of sweet potato. We eat sweet potatoes a lot. I love them roasted. Sage eats them a lot, um, either just like cut up in cubes or roasted whole and then mashed up. It's just such a great staple. I feel like we have, we eat sweet potatoes more than regular potatoes. Although I love me a good roasted, like rustic potato. I just find like, we tend to buy sweet potato more. Which fun fact, I like hated sweet potato when I was a kid. I was like, ugh, it's like sweet and it's like a potato. It should be savory, you know? Then I also got a couple of cucumbers. We use these a lot in our smoothies, also just like chopping up for dipping in hummus and of course salads. Randomly, I got a plantain. I've, I've bought these before, but I, I never get around to actually using it. The last one I got, I gave to my girlfriend because she was here and she eats these all the time. And I got it to make for her as like a dessert. And then she like, yeah, I, we didn't get to dessert. And I was like, here, take this home, take this plantain home. She was happy. That's the relationship we have. We're happy when we give each other food. So I'm gonna, I'm thinking, cause I know with the yellow ones, they're more like the sweeter style. I think if you're doing like more plantain chips or savory, you want them green. But I, my plan is to saute and caramelize this with a little butter and maybe put it on like pancakes or something. I'll probably make it for Sage. This is kind of like her new food for the week. I'm always trying to like add new stuff for her. Uh, of course, avocados. I love avocados, but they just weren't something we ate every single week. And now we do because it's such a good, easy baby food. You just wait for them to ripen. You can chop them up, no cooking. And then it's great. We eat a lot of tacos. We eat a lot of like Mexican inspired foods and guac is like a must. So we got that, we got peppers. I'm planning on doing stuffed peppers. I got some ground beef downstairs. I wanna mix with like rice and veggies and stuff and ooh, get some, uh, get these stuffed and baked. I haven't made that in forever. So maybe I will make a recipe for that. I have a pomegranate, which um, I really love on oatmeal or in a salad. It's delicious. It, it's a messy thing to open, but it's worth it in my opinion. I got, I gotta be very careful with these. These are fragile. I got some little tomatoes on the vine. These are the sweetest ones in my opinion. And our garden is officially, there's no more tomatoes. 
we, we ate the last of them. I made them into delicious tomato sauces and stuff, but those are nice fresh chopped up in a salad or something, or even like on like a tuna toasty open face sandwich and then chop some up. It's really good. I got some lemons, I got some limes, I got, you know, the citrus. And yeah, I just use those for like lots of different things. Lemon water, guac. Um, I use lemon juice as well in Sage's food. If I wanna add some saltiness without the salt, I will do the lemons. And then I also got some things like, I, I call this like the immune boosting trio. I got some ginger, some turmeric, which is not a staple, but I saw it and I'm like, oh, this is a good like fall, winter. I don't, ooh. <laughs> kind of look like little wormies, but <laughs> they're really good for you. Turmeric is very anti-inflammatory and it has a very bold taste. You usually find it in curries and stuff, but it's, um, oh my God, is it, what, is it slippery? What is going on? Okay. I also put it in smoothies sometimes. I have a smoothie recipe on my blog that uses turmeric and it's just so good for you. So I got some, I uh, got, yeah, and then the ginger and then I have some nice local garlic. So that is just always something I'm adding to like soups and stews and stuff. And then we have some carrots. So carrots and I have celery here. I feel like are essentials for soup and stew season because this is your base. You chop this up, carrots, celery, onion, garlic. And then whether you make it a vegetarian dish or add in some meat, it's just like the go-to for that base. And I just like to have it on hand. I also have this beautiful organic broccoli here. Sage has been really into just like, I will chop this up into little finger bit sizes and just steam it and she loves her broccoli. So I got that. And then also I just like to add it to stir fries. You can also make like a nice broccoli soup. My mom makes that all the time. And then what else do we have here? Oh, I got the squashes. I'm actually making a squash soup or butternut squash soup this weekend. So I got two kinds because I was just gonna do butternut and then I'm like, oh, you know what? I'll add in a little acorn squash too. And I'll probably make some extra on the side for sage without salt. But acorn squash is delicious. You just roast these, like cut them in half, roast them, and then you can scoop out all the delicious roasted, um, squash inside and that's really yummy. I also got a spaghetti squash, which if you've never had this before, when you roast it, you kind of like flake it with a fork and it goes all stringy like spaghetti. And this is a fun food for us to eat. Sage has had it before. And it's really good too if you just get into those noodle pieces and then even have it as your base for like a uh, meatball spaghetti sauce. That's really good too. I also have some mushrooms. I've been enjoying making this chicken rice and mushroom dish in my Instant Pot. It's a one pot deal. It's like done in under 30 minutes. It's delicious and I add mushrooms to that. And then I have eggs. We have more eggs downstairs, but I've been going through eggs so much lately. I've been making a lot of pancakes on the weekend for the whole family, um, scrambled eggs, fried eggs, also just like baking stuff. Most recipes call for eggs, so it's just good to have that on hand. Now, if you're wondering why we have so many bananas, like one, one bundle, two bundle, three bundle, four bundle. Matt's like, do we need this many bananas? I'm like, yeah, we do. You know what the problem is? They take a bit to ripe, and then once they're ripe, I feel like that's when I wanna use them. So. I have a lot of recipes. I'm working on a little secret project. I keep teasing it, but I need ripe bananas for it. And Sage eats a lot of bananas. I eat bananas in my smoothies. And even if I'm making like pancakes on the weekend, one of my favorite recipes calls for a banana to naturally sweeten it. And I just know they never go in the garbage or in the compost. Like when they're ripe, I either use them or I peel and I freeze them and then they're in the smoothie category. Or you can make like nice cream and there's so many things you can do with frozen bananas. They like you can even thaw them and then use them in banana bread. So I love bananas. <laughs> okay, anyways, then we have some condiments here. I got some almond butter smooth, nothing else in here, just dry roasted almonds. And then I have some jam. I really like this uh, company, uh, St. Delphour. Um, it's from, it says from France. I don't know if it actually is. No, it does say from France. Anyways, I really like this one. It's just sweetened with fruit juices and no added sugar. We've been eating this since we were like 
little kids. Um, my mom always bought this one. I switch between a few different jam brands, but I always look for low sugar or no added sugar. I also have a really yummy chia jam recipe on my blog. I'll link it if you guys have not checked it. Actually, I'll link it down below. And oh, and then I also got some tamari. We were all out. I do have coconut aminos, which I use as well. It's a little bit sweeter. Matt likes tamari better. It's just a this one is a low sodium um, brewed soy sauce. This, so it's gluten-free and it's a fermented food. I got a couple of cans of this. These are organic cooked lentils. And then my new obsession, butter beans. My sister and her boyfriend, he's Jamaican and his mom always makes like jerk chicken, oxtail, and they wanted to make their own oxtail. And it was like with rice and beans and the beans they used were butter beans. So I don't know if that's like a traditional Jamaican thing to use butter beans, but it was so good and super buttery. And now like this is a staple. <laughs> Sage likes it too. It's like a great like uh, baby lead weaning food. And also I have here some coconut. It says coconut cream. I couldn't find coconut milk without anything in it. So I have gotten this brand before. Um, but yeah, really with coconut milk or cream, I just look for the least amount of ingredients as possible. And if this one's too thick, I can always just water it down with some filtered water. It's totally fine. I got some salted grass-fed butter. I like to get unsalted for baking and salted for buttering toast and stuff. It's a healthier alternative than like margarine. And then I got, we've already dug into this today, I got my favorite cream cheese from Arla. They have a bunch of different flavors and stuff. They have like herbs and spices and stuff, but I just got the OG original. And we had that with uh, toasted bagels this morning and some smoked salmon and capers, and it was really, really good. Okay, so that is the veggie side. I Over here, I have some, oh, I got my milk, which is also a fridge staple. Uh, just some unsweetened oat milk. I got two tubs of this. I put another one downstairs. And I got some unsalted bone broth. This is chicken bone broth. Um, I just like to have that if I'm like sauteing veggies and stuff. I don't want to use too much oil or I'm making a soup and I just want to add like a broth already made. It's quick, it's easy. Um, my favorite gluten-free pasta from Jovial, like it's the best. They have so many different types of pasta from this line and yeah, I really, really like it. So I'm glad they are officially in Canada now. I got some black pepper flax crackers. Um, we didn't pick up hummus on this round, but we have a lot of hummus in the fridge. So that's just like an easy, like in the middle of the day snack. If you saw my healthy snack swaps video, you'll know these are the best. These are by Frankie's. They're a Canadian company. They are organic clouds, deliciously baked organic puffs made with sprouted quinoa and sprouted brown rice. Still, still a junky food, but super delicious and just better for you than like the regular stuff that may have added dyes and weird ingredients. And this is the cheddar flavor. They also have like barbecue, jalapeno, and they're really good. The texture is bomb. Um, we also dug into this already. I just like put some into one of my containers in our pantry, but we got some old fashioned rolled oats. I've been making oatmeal again. I feel like I always take a break over the summertime. And then once like the warm fall flavors start peeking through and like the cooler mornings, I crave some warm, delicious oats. And I've been making pumpkin oatmeal if the recipe isn't up already, it's coming soon on the blog. It is so good. Like honestly, it's not just like, oh, a trendy oatmeal. It tastes so good. It's like coconut milk and maple and pumpkin and crushed walnuts on top. It's mwah, delish. So I got that. And then last but not least, we got our carbs. I got some bread. I got sliced bread, which we've already dug into. We made some BLTs last night and yeah, so the sky is already half have gone. I just got some sprouted organic multi-grain sliced bread as well as some sprouted cinnamon, cinnamon raisin bagels. Once again, that cinnamony, warming spices and flavors really been loving. Usually other staples I usually get are apples, which we have so many of right now because we went apple picking recently. You would have seen that in a previous vlog. Uh, freezer stuff, we are stocked right now, but like frozen mango, frozen blueberries, um, just frozen like peas and corn and stuff. Easy things to add into soups, stir fries. Um, I usually try to have that on hand. And then downstairs is where we already have meat. I didn't really show any like actual meat, but 
ground meat like beef, grass-fed beef, um, chicken or turkey is great for meatballs, chicken thighs, which I love. I feel like they're just such an easy protein and more flavorful and moist than like chicken breast. And I'm trying to think what else we have downstairs. Those are the, I think we have ribs downstairs too. Oh, and then some stewing beef. So that's really good for those like slow cooked stews. And that is pretty much it. I'm gonna have a blog post down below for you guys to check out just to see uh, like a list of our go-to staple foods that we always buy. So definitely check that out as well as, like I said, I'll have a playlist down below of my videos that I have of like the things I buy organic, the things that I don't buy organic, the foods I eat every week, those pretty much stay the same. So I will link that down below for you guys. Also, if you need help planning recipes and grocery shopping for the week for your family, I actually have a really awesome digital product on my shop. It's a grocery list and meal planner bundle. It's You can do it digital or print it out and laminate it. One sec. This is what it looks like. I even have a little dry erase marker I keep on the fridge. It has a little magnet on it. And there is a grocery list one that you can just tick off what you need. You can also customize it and add a couple different things. And then this one here is just a weekly meal planner that you can actually write in the meals for the week. I laminated mine because I'm extra and then I can just use my dry erase for it. But I love these. They really help make just planning meals for the week so much easier. And as things run out in the house, I just check them off and then you can even just take a photo of it if, you, if that's easier and take it with you to the grocery store. I also have a full video on how I meal plan for the week, which I will link down below. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you in my next one. Have a fabulous day and happy grocery shopping. Bye guys.